we're in, we're in, we're in. And, and remember the shirt, if you say, he's wearing the same shirt the next day. I'm recording, I do a lot of recording in, in a lab. So when I say I'm gonna go over, I've recorded as many as five or six episodes on a day. And that's usually what I will try to keep, minimize recording multiple, multiple, by do one, do one. No, I don't do that. That's too time consuming, not using my time very smartly to me. So I make day for a lab day. And yesterday I had, uh, did it, but really was feeling low energy, uh, kind of tired. So I only did the two and then uh, ended up, um, or two days ago, did the two that are coming out on the 26th and 27th. Um, for YouTube, uh, it will be closer to the first of the year for uh, Rumble for these videos. Yesterday's uh, uh, esoteric meaning or lyrical breakdown of the police's song "Spirit Spirits in the Material World" um, was our last uh, video. Awesome, very deep, very occultic, very esoteric. I mean, pretty much telling you not to have power in the matrix and not to give them the lean as they're your energy almost doing really telling you they're not they're not bringing no solutions no revolution no evolution to you yeah uh, not a primrose path for sure when you wake up and really understand uh, the g's if you know what i mean we'll call them the g's the g's meant <laughs> the g's were the meant now put it together it should be good decoding um, anyway, so today, uh, it's very interesting. I had uh, 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 some things I have really not talked about in depth here. Uh, and I did mention some stuff in the last video about doing a BC, which we will. Uh, but another one was that I've mentioned, but not in depth. Um, and it's the time splits. I don't know if you've heard of it, the time splits. Um, from a dimensional uh, point of frequency and vibration, um, um, the time splits about um, you know, I, I I really like using certain people's videos as you see me uh, talking about the time splits of um, stuff and mention it. It may even be mentioned on a past video said. I don't think I shared the time split with Sarah uh, at all. Um, you know, I like to use videos from other people to give a backup, especially when you're looking at a Robert Seffer, uh, people who have been like Sarah's been in different, different, um, um, actually mystery schools and even uh, having a one on one work with a shaman. Uh, a lot of those initiations we don't get anymore and somebody may be able to go get them definitely is great. We're, you know, we're getting initiations from within. Uh, we're being initiated with the, within. One of the first things when you look at it, when you have your enlightenment, the beginning, that's like an initiation. And many people got caught. This is the end. It's not. You just started. You just, you, you, this journey has just began for you with the first initiation. And then there's a Mason initiation called Hiram Abyss, where the, the men surround the bed and the person lays there and it's almost like bidding him to come up and be resurrected or uh, birthed again. That, that which falls like winter and dies in winter, always will, there's always a springtime coming um, type of thing. And in that Hiram Abyss, Mason, third degree, activity of, uh, of uh, uh, that they do in the in the temples it's it's actually the third it's actually a right that third degree mason would take part in that Hiram Abiff and then when you go into Hiram I never really went deep into Hiram Abiff it's connected to a lot of ancient stuff Hiram Abiff was um, a teacher, I'd have to even remember, I'm not recalling the Hiram Abiff, but it's about resurrecting from a state of down to getting up. Um, as you see me talk about sports and music, signing contracts, two years ago, an NFL player took a hit, defensive player for the Buffalo Bills. He went down um, 
he went down and everybody surrounded him. And this was a Monday night football game and, and many called it out and seen it that when you look at it on TV and then you've seen the number that went down was 33 number 33 I believe and the number that was standing out kneeling above him was number three and then when you look at the higher Biff ritual and you can find it which is a third degree ritual you can find it and you can even find pictures of it you'll see that what's happening in the picture of that of that ritual in masonry the third degree ritual called higher Biff is that he's laying down and number three standing over him is we're not, many people are saying, that's Hiram Abiff on Monday Night Football. Tell you how it works, man. Yeah. These are all in front of us. So that's why the truth's in front of us. Because we don't perceive it and we don't understand it. We don't know what's being said to us. And they're signing off that well, you accepted it. You know, we told you. We told you. You consented because you didn't not consent. Was like consenting. Yeah. Um, and this happens all the time with us. So what we're going to get into, though, is the time splits. This is very interesting of this concept. I've held it for a while. I've never really went on depth in it. I know many have it. It's like the new earth coming in the old earth changing, and there's like a split of two. It's actually, uh, and many of you have watched the teachings and watched the ministry of, in the past, or uh, spiritual teaching of one Dolores Cannon. She talked about this years ago, that this would happen actually 2024, she, but she talked about this. Um, and I have somebody I'm going to share. It's not Sarah. Somebody that I discovered a month ago and I have never mentioned here. I have not. It was my first time sharing her, but she's kind of blown me away. Her name is Gabby Kovalenko. Very, a lot of wisdom coming from this young lady. And I mean young. She's only 24 years old. But it's stuff that makes me go, what? When, she, when I found out her age, I was like, what? But not surprised this girl was writing stuff in junior high about having spirit guides at school and about having intuition. She actually wrote a book about it and wrote this thing in, in class about this when she was in seventh grade, eighth grade. Very, very, very spiritually advanced young woman. And we're going to talk with, with, with uh, we're going to listen to, it's a very, this is a podcast that she's getting asked these questions. It is an hour and 40 minutes. We are not going to do the whole hour, 40 minutes. I may be do anywhere from seven, 15 to 20. Uh, if I feel it, I will continue it from that place and maybe we'll do a couple of them and, um, and stuff. So let's go ahead. Her name is Gabby Kovalenko. Really the most scary time for humanity in many ways. What people are experiencing now is a war on consciousness, a spiritual battle, if you will, a time of splits, the shift of the 3D versus the 5D. So think of it as we're dealing with the exit. So um, I will do, I'm just going to give a little, I will add, I will stop and maybe add to if And if I see something that I, you know, revelating from, I will add to. Uh, definitely will have these commercials that I will ink out after five seconds. It's boo, right? Boo hoo. I, I don't, I can't stand them. Um, but anyways, let's go on. I will give her much time to speak. If I need to add, I will. If not, I won't. Existential crisis of more AI, more of a disconnect, this kind of narcissistic edge society is experiencing that I spoke of, then we need to have the opposite end of the spectrum increasing just as much as the other end of the spectrum, which is leading to the shadow in the collective consciousness. So with more separation, we also have to deal with more acceptance and integration on the other side. And so I think that this new earth reality, what that's going to be breeding is almost a utopian new value system, which is given birth to through new children, through new vehicles of awareness. And the souls that are awakening are going to be so integrated, so loving, so supportive of a higher intelligence and more connection and love on planet Earth, that it's going to be balancing out the spectrum, maybe leading to an experience in the future in which there's almost like two Earths at the same time.
Gabby Kobalenko, welcome on the show. What are you most excited about right now in your life? I think I'd have to say the thing that makes me most excited is the launch of my TV show that I filmed in Ecuador a few months ago. It was a very new and interesting experience for me. It was my first time channeling, doing a live transmission the way that I usually do, except with a whole camera crew around me, following me around in nature, with no script, with no teleprompter. They couldn't even believe themselves that I would be just dropping these wisdom bombs on the spot because most people think that I need to prepare ahead of time. And this was essentially a whole course on consciousness expansion, on inner healing, just really streamed in the mode from source. And so that's dropping this Sunday. Actually, by the time this podcast releases, it's already going to be live on NTTV. So I'm very excited for people to, to see what I recorded. And it's actually something I myself haven't yet previewed. So I have no idea what exactly I said because it was coming out completely live and from the heart in the moment. And I'm just really excited to share this consciousness transmission and to allow people to feel into the, the live nature of really how this awareness comes through. Yeah. So that's coming well, soon. When I started going um, on my own spiritual awakening in the beginning of my 20s, you know, I started to activate this, this deep remembering that I think you were talking about when you say that you talk and you don't remember what you said, but you are coming at it from, you know, this inherent wisdom that is you by recognizing who you are in truth. And we might hear around this word of unearned wisdom. And from older generations might not understand these concepts of how someone so young can tap into this potential of possibilities and wisdom and knowledge. So I read once that you said that you began to grasp that wisdom is not acquired, but remembered. And with that, you challenged yourself to dare to express what previously you had not allowed yourself to. So I'd love to walk people through this, this journey of what it is to tap into wisdom from your heart, the inherent knowing, um, instead of just grasping on concepts and ideas in the outer world and regurgitating information. It's a beautiful point. I view wisdom as the truth of primordial consciousness. It's the essence of spirit. It's what already lives in the field. And so when we put ourselves into a particular frequency, which is the frequency of love, or of truth, we're able to open up our own divine channel and connect to this inner knowing. Every person innately has this inherent knowing. There's a knowing of who you are at your core when it comes to the innate qualities of self. It's who you were before all the conditioning biases set in, before the program nature was developed, before you started to lean into your mental intellect to make all the decisions and choices in your everyday life. It's simply the knowing that comes through when you're deeply in touch with your energy. And that's that truth that's developed simply through more deep integration of who you are in the most authentic sense. So what I encourage people to do is to essentially think about who were they before they were conditioned to be their physical identity. And the physical identity is usually so hard to detach from because it's everything that we think about ourselves. It's the person that we've chosen to conjure up as the persona. It's our chosen job, it's our chosen possessions, everything that we choose to attach to, to gain a certain sense of self. But that sense of self is typically very false in nature. It's untrue because it's the person we think we need to be to achieve a set outcome in life. It's part of the process of trying to model a version of yourself that is comfortable in the world, that is achieving success, abundance, comfort, fitting in. And that very nature of fitting in is what I think makes us detach from the real soulful alignment with the wisdom of the higher self. So wisdom is something that's really multidimensional in nature. It involves disassociating from the rigid mind to be able to contact the energy, which inspires us to flow in the direction of consciousness and the truth that is pervasive in all things. So in my case, I definitely realized that there's a lot deeply within me that wants to be channeled, wants to be expressed initially through just writing, which I realized I can get into this flow state when I choose to just not be driven by the mental commands. When I'm not thinking about what I was taught in school or what people are expecting from me, and what other people are talking about, I tap into a much deeper place of, of knowing. And that feels like a very deep frequency of love. It's a place where I feel divinely inspired to be creative. It's a very feminine state that I've contacted in my own field, which then allows that wisdom to expand. And the beautiful thing is I think wisdom connects us to divine purpose. It's really the mission that we can contact, which is found in truly trusting what our energy wants to do, what direction does it want to flow in. 
And so all of us have this deep touch point of wisdom in our own hearts and souls, which lets us realize what are we really meant to be doing here? In that multidimensional way, we can think about if we came down into this lower dimensional plane and we need to remember who we are, we need to contact the point of being really a purposeful being. We have to re- Okay, you guys, this is, if, if you, if you're paying attention to her and haven't seen her, this girl is coming off her self. She doesn't have a teleprompter. This is what caught me the first couple times I listened to her, how much wisdom and how much knowledge in, in her frequency that she's putting out. You could just tell it's very, very high. And her state of balance as she delivers is very high. You can see that she's really just putting it out there and deep. So some of you new people, it's definitely don't be afraid to ask questions uh, and, or anything in anybody. Anytime you have a question, drop it in the comments is that I, I like what I hear. She's talking about dealing from the real. To me, the real is definitely a high vibrational to the next level, as this is about quantum jumping to 5D with the great time split. Um, I made, uh, I already can tell that I'm going to probably do at least two of these. I will stop it anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to stop, and I will do number two. Uh, you know, probably at least from there to the next 15, 20 minutes, probably closer to 20. Um, and then we'll go from there. But I'm just, I'm blown. I hear, I'm hearing it. Remember, what did our energy initially want to do when it chose to incarnate in this time space matrix? Why are we choosing to be here to express ourselves authentically, creatively, as kind of across the palette of consciousness. What are all these radiant qualities that we can start to exude when we allow ourselves simply to be? And that's where wisdom really starts to flow in, in the form of downloads, creative ideas, different things that you feel passionate about expressing. And in my case, that just became something that I more deeply and deeply started to, to contact and then express more and more, in which case it started to just flow out to the point where now I can you know, sit in the middle of Ecuador and just record an entire series on this because these are concepts that are very ethereal in nature. These are archetypal themes that we can all really contact if we're choosing to lean into our hearts and feel into what is the purpose of our experience, which of course comes through the realm of feeling and being in touch with everything somatically, experientially, not just from a cognitive place of thinking about all these things. So that's the main thing I'd say. It's contacting wisdom is about not trying to think about these different concepts, but it's about remembering what your soul already knows what you about know. who you yes. were before the identity shaped up, which is that's a deal right there i love the way she framed that sentence it's not about acquiring something like a bunch of collective thoughts of consciousness it's about acquiring the wisdom by not learning it by allowing it to come out of you because you already know it and she's talking about knowing it from a different space than a 3d space that's why i'm saying there's a lot of manifestation going in from the higher realms they can fizzle down to the lower realm, which is why you would jump 5D from a 3D if it's physical. But this this time split's very much caught my attention. And this is not the first time I've heard of the time split. Um, yeah, it's very, very much, yeah, good stuff. It's really remembering who you were even as a spirit before you chose to be a human mm. in this incarnation. Hmm. Mm. Remembering that, that we are that spirit and... You know, there's a teacher that we both share interest in, uh, Dolores Cannon, and she talks about that humanity is going to be going through a split, essentially where there's going to be different realities simultaneously at the same time on the same planet. And we're going to essentially break up into a higher dimensional realm, what a lot of people are now calling maybe the new earth. And then the the matrix that has been storing um, human consciousness and capacity for so many years, decades, and centuries. Um, where do you see us in this moment of the split? Where are we headed? And yeah, sort of what are these two differences of this side versus this side that we're going to create a, a juncture point? Mm -hmm. So typically people refer to this split as the difference between the 3D and the 5D. That's the most basic way to characterize the split in consciousness because 3D is associated with the rigidity of the ego this kind of masculine shadow, 
It's the box through which we can perceive reality as just a fixed construct in which there is no ability to flow into the arts consciousness, where we remain detached from spirit. We're making choices based on purely conditioned reflexes and responses that are societally programmed. And so this 3D construct is something that keeps us very limited. We don't experience ourselves as a spirit. There is no fluid identity. There is no energy that's compelling us to really be and explore our purpose or our true intentions. It's simply a model in which we act in a very conditional manner. So not only are we conditioned to be this version of ourselves, but everything is conditional in this 3D world. That's kind of the old paradigm. It's the world in which we regurgitate responses, just like you said. It's the reality in which we create an avatar early in our lives, and then we just do everything based on that conditioning model. So we end up being sucked into a certain job, or we have certain relationships, which make us feel like we just need to be experiencing whatever we were initially conditioned to experience. In that reality, there is no true purpose. There is no constant expansion. There's no familiarity with our heart's awareness. Right. It's simply a way of being that is kind of robotic or monotone yeah, in like nature. Disconnected. And so that conditioning model doesn't allow us to explore really the point of this experience. It is unconscious in nature. It's driven by a lot of primal responses, a lot of fear, the survival mode, living from the lower chakra system, which is simply about physical output, making money, you know, experiencing things on the physical, more primitive level, which is really the unexplored aspect of human potential. Or should I say that's what we're used to, and it's not allowing us to tap into the unexplored qualities of the higher self. So meanwhile, the 5D is really the bridge into the world of, of spirit. It's where we can start to contact our own multidimensional nature and really recall what is the point of choosing to be here. Usually when we get into this 5D sort of consciousness, we remain open to our identity. We look at ourselves as a fluid essence. We recognize that we are not just this physical self. We really are a multidimensional self. We are energy, which means we have the capacity to be this fluid entity. We can have a broad personality. We can be choosing to explore our creativity in synergy with our mental intellect and create a career and a life path, which is really at the nexus of spirituality and the physical world. A 5D consciousness is not about disassociation. So I think a lot of people in the spiritual world are trying to disassociate from 3D. That can be a real issue because if we're trying to move away from the 3D, like reject our physical essence and our identity and our attachment to the earth plane, that's still gonna lead to suffering and to disillusionment because that doesn't integrate the fact that we as a soul chose to come down here to really master the art of integration, which is the way that I would really define spirituality. Spirituality is about bringing together these different aspects of self. It's about enjoying your role as a human avatar. It's about figuring out how can you master harmony, balance, find the divinity in the physical journey, and find the way to be both heart-centered and mental at the same time, to constantly expand, to keep enjoying your physical capabilities, which allows you to both love yourself and love reality. But the 5D is also not about just being ingrained in what's on the other side. It's about finding the way to be spiritually fulfilled in the now moment, which means being very present and opening yourself up to a whole canvas of new experiences. So in the 5D sense, it's when people really start to open their hearts and think about the feeling that they want to experience in reality. It's about contacting frequencies on a whole new level. It's feeling not like reality is a simulation that dishes out to you certain possibilities that you respond to, but rather you start to see yourself as the architect of this game. You start to imagine that if you are both source and you know the source of your life and the source of creation kind of entangled as an aspect of consciousness, it allows you to see how you're playing into this creation in real time, how everything in your life is an extension of you and an expression of source consciousness at the same time. So it allows you to feel a degree of limitlessness and freedom to both paint new possibilities in real time and also to ascertain a deeper sense of personal mastery. Because if you start to see everything as a reflection of you, there is no more fear. There's no more survival mechanism that needs to rule your reality. You're touching a point of really being unbound by these past conditioning biases, by everything that might make you initially feel like you are you know, an output of the physical world, that your trauma is something that defines you or that you're simply responding to the possibilities that exist. In this 5D model, you're experiencing yourself as constantly in harmony with everything all around you. And if you want something to change, you start to realize you were the creator of that change. And so that provides a really new edge to reality, where you start to feel like if you're the engineer of this experience, anything that you want to see change, 
you need to be the precursor to. You need to think about how can you choose mm. something energetically within yourself to literally step into a new dimension within reality. And that's where ultimately the 5D is a space in which all possibilities are possible. You are constantly flowing with reality and you're not perceiving determinism. Man, that's deep. Um, I just definitely give her the ball, and let her go. She's just going in from her soul coming out, emitting. I can see the emanations coming out of her light. She ain't hesitating and she's not moving too fast, too loud, but just right. Definitely good stuff. The causes and the effects, but you see yourself as kind of on both ends of the spectrum at the same time. And so I find that to be a very liberating perspective. This is the kind of zone in which people can heal and experience quantum jumping and different phenomena which are purely energetic in nature and can be even explained by quantum physics, which is also the less reductionistic way of viewing reality as quantum realm of limitless possibilities. So the 5D is a beautiful place to experience yourself. And right now we're already experiencing this. So to your question, people are already experiencing either the old paradigm or the new paradigm in one time space matrix based on our own frequency and energetic configuration. We're experiencing one or the other. This is why so many people right now are starting to wake up because we have the opportunity and we can see through different conscious communities, through meeting people that are really perceiving the world through a loving lens, that it's really based on choice. We have the free will to decide if we want to be living in the old world or in the new world. And the split is becoming more and more apparent, wherein some people are just bound to experience more and more suffering, and they think that that is inevitable because that's what they have been conditioned to believe. And they're not daring enough to realize that there is another way to perceive themselves. Meanwhile, the people that are choosing to integrate, they're choosing to really approach the light aspect of consciousness with, with hope, with a desire to be more deeply integrated, to serve the divine, to find their purpose, to experience love and unity consciousness, those are the people that start to experience that reality. So that's essentially the choice that we have. As an energetic being, we can choose to wake up, we can choose to align with these higher frequencies, to come into this, this higher chakra activation, which is really moving into our higher self, which is even above the standard seven chakra system. That's more about the 12th chakra. It's actually outside of your physical body. It's a reality in which you're physically living in a higher dimensional state, because you're constantly contacting the truth of your spirit and communicating this truth through every action, decision, thought, and intention. And so if you choose to drop into that deeper state of embodying your purpose, you're experiencing Earth as a landscape of higher dimensional possibility, which is the 5D. So that's the choice that we can make, mm. and it's all up to our perspective. Yeah, and beautifully said, I wanted to ask you, you said this integration of, of brain and heart, you know, that those, those two incoherence of, merging the feminine with the masculine what do you think are the i guess outcomes when someone is very developed in their heart space but has not mastered their mind and vice versa very very intellectual very in their mind knows how to manifest things with their mind in the material world but has not developed the compassion or the heart to sustain that so not balance. when how do you see these two um you talked about the balance but what happens when people go to an extreme? Be, they develop too much in this too. space and not enough in the mind and, and the other way around as well. I think a really good way to characterize that is the difference between the toxic masculine expression and the toxic feminine expression, because these are the two extreme ends of the polarity spectrum. If the goal is to be experiencing synergy and divine balance, which is really the harmony and divine dance between the masculine and feminine, that's like the yin yang. That's when we can see perfect harmony and balance and the two becoming one. But in some cases, if we're just heart centered, but in a way that we give all of our authority to the feeling state, that can end up giving all the energy to this yin energy, essentially the dark feminine expression. And the dark feminine has a way of being really intense, very open and wild, and sometimes even fierce in its expression of emotion. That can be a very ungrounded way to perceive reality, because if it's just emotive, if it's just based on the pure responding aspect, then that is not really in touch with what can we give to this experience to experience balance. If we're just receiving input from the environment and we're responding to it, we end up feeling like a victim. So the people that have this wounded feminine nature, we can see are typically expressing a lot of violent emotions. They may be dealing with a lot of trauma responses, like people that have gone through, let's say, intense abuse and they feel like a victim. What can typically happen characteristically is these people feel 
A lot of deep pain and the wounded nature doesn't allow them to embody their purpose. They're unable to see that they can transmute negative experiences to feel a state of empowered action. Transmutation, alchemy. Because they're not in that masculine state of orienting themselves physically and somatically with what they can do to transmute this unexpressed potential, what they're experiencing is just more pain, more suffering, a lot of grief, a lot of emotions, which lead to internal energetic contraction. And so if you feel that kind of contracted state in which you're feeling everything in your heart chakra, you might be a wounded empath. You might be feeling like this world is just a place in which you experience more and more suffering. But in reality, that suffering is due to you not being in a healthy state of balance in which you can express your potentiality. And so what often comes through in the truth of the heart chakra when there's a lot of pain there is that we need to take that pain and turn it into purpose. We need to understand how the pain we're feeling is allowing us to route the desire to transmute the pain into something that we can actually change in ourselves and in the world. We're very often the wounded em- We're coming on the 20 minute mark now. I'm gonna let her finish this thought and then I'll, 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 I'll stop it. Path, the people that are such deep feelers, especially a lot of women that are physically so in touch with their feminine that it can lead to emotional overwhelm is that those emotions need to be used to create a sense of a real desire to do something about the imbalance they're feeling in the world. The empath is turns into a superhuman when they're able to take this divine wisdom coming through emotional connection and to allow it to become action and to take this, this deep feeling of, of a desire to change something and to allow it to become the source of that change. Meanwhile, feeling disempowered will just lead to more and more of this emotional overwhelm. So the other end of the spectrum, if emotions are not integrated whatsoever, the exact opposite happens. So the toxic masculine is a mode in which we act purely from the lower chakra sense of wanting to do things for a set reason. So it's purely mental. It's purely something that we see played out in a lot of narcissistic stories, wherein people just do things because they want something out of a certain situation. They want to maybe present themselves in a certain way, achieve conditional success, prove their identity, uh, achieve money, achieve success, fame, a certain relationship. It's also very deterministic. We do everything because our ego wants us to achieve a certain thing. And so without the heart-centered focus, what ends up happening is even though we can get what we want, we can be really effective manifestors from that mental place, we end up feeling empty. There is no fulfillment because if the heart is not connected, then we end up manifesting just to hide the inner void. And there's still this inherent emptiness, which makes us feel sad even after we get what we physically want. And I think that's really the overwhelming theme in the world today. Most people are functioning in this overly masculine perspective and and kind of energetic alignment because we're taught to be more masculine in nature. Both men and women tend to have a very hard approach in life because that's what the school system typically reinforces that's what parents typically teach yeah it's more of an approach of you know don't be too in touch with your emotional state that is weakness where vulnerability is connected to a state of disempowerment because what's taught is really the refined egoic strategy and very often people don't even realize how to synergize thinking with feeling because they don't realize that these two things can be orchestrated in tandem with each other that's a really really big issue one of the saddest things that I often see are when, when children are taught to suppress their emotions because their parents say, you know, to a little boy, you can't cry. Or to a little girl, you're too weak if you show your emotions. Or if they're experiencing any kind of pain or sadness, just suppress those things because you need to do things in a certain way. This is very commonly the narrative that parents will implement in a child's psyche when they want them to have a certain career. Or they want to do something specifically to maybe, you know, see their child fulfill a dream that they themselves have not experienced. So where this change really needs to begin is in conscious parenting. That's what I'm a huge advocate for because I think There's a book most of this too. trauma that ends up leading to the distortion in people's identity and really the crisis that we see in people being over masculine and not being feeling in nature as well is because the child is not given the permission to really hold space for their own emotional state and to see the deep wisdom wow, in emotion. Their soul. And so that's where it all begins. If we can't experience our wisdom as an adult, then wow, there was some moment so in our lovely. early lifetime experience when we chose to just disassociate from the wisdom altogether. That's a very sad reality because if we're now feeling a split, for example, the so outer world is not conforming to what we want to be experiencing. Maybe we're not happy in our relationship, in work. We want something else. Maybe we feel a certain calling, but it's a subtle whisper coming through our intuition where we receive some kind of idea that's something that our ego doesn't really want to conform to, we might just blow off that idea. We might think that that's coming from somewhere outside of us. That's just random or even a distraction. But in reality, 
those moments in which we contact the truth of our spirit, maybe through a sense of feeling discomfort relative to what we have manifested from the egoic state, is guiding us to make the changes necessary to be really experiencing alignment in our lifetime. And if we're not used to embodying our truth and seeing the wisdom in our own feeling state, then we just can't give permission for our feelings to become our guides in reality. And so that's where it all begins. I think if we're not integrated, then we're either going to be too deeply disempowered because our feelings are just making us feel closed off from our potential. We, do, we think that the gap is too big to really to merge the two, the inner state of what we're experiencing, what we're experiencing externally. Or we're going to be feeling like we just have to be doing things a certain way in the more masculine sense and not give any authority to our feelings because those feelings are dangerous. Maybe they're going to topple you know, our entire reality because what we've created is already a false construct. And so that's really the question we need to ask ourselves. If we're brutally honest with ourselves, are we experiencing connection and love towards everything in our life? Or if we experience a frequency of love internally, would that demand that we make changes? Because if we can't support a frequency of love internally, which is purely a state of alignment and integration between the masculine and feminine polarities, that would require us to be experiencing the same all around us. And if that isn't our experience, then something's got to change. But this can be a very triggering point for people because obviously we like to mask the discomfort with more disassociation, with more distractions, people just adding in certain elements in their 3D realities, like certain toxic relationships or drugs or substances, or just doing things to escape the truth of what we're feeling because we want to be masking this egoic illusion. When in reality, the safest thing to do would be to just confront our own darkness and to realize if we can't integrate within, we're never going to feel integrated with our reality. So that's one of the strongest messages I think we all need to integrate. All right. I'm going to stop it there at the 2530 mark. I need to remember that the 2530 mark. All right. The 2530 mark. All right. For me, this was powerful. And I, I have ran into Gabby a month ago, three weeks ago had watched a few of her videos, seen, seen her on the show, and I was astonished with her by her, and I've watched some other videos, and i just astonished by her wisdom, knowledge, and how she just goes, and even doesn't stop, but doesn't overwhelm you with uh, being, talking too fast. It's very, very balanced, very, this girl's only, this woman's only 24, but she's a wealth of knowledge. She definitely carried this from the other side. Yeah, she definitely has some experiences on what she's been before, but um, I just want to let you guys know we're going to, this is one, um, the the time split, um, we're going to talk with Gabby Kolobinko. Uh I'm very excited about it, and we were going to, I'm going to do a part two on this, leaving off from where we're at, and then we'll go from there. Um, all right, have a great day.